Okay, functional groups is what we're going to talk about today in organic chemistry. And they make, um, they make carbon uh, or hydrocarbons more exciting because we're going to add a couple different uh, elements to this. All right, so let's get started. Table R is where you find functional groups. Functional groups are when we take some of the hydrogen off of a hydrocarbon and we replace it with something else, either another element, in the case of this first one, or a group of elements in a certain arrangement. So this is all about pattern recognition. You have to be able to recognize patterns in order to name organic compounds that have functional groups in it. Basically, functional group is like your, it's a, uh, the compound will act in a certain way and have certain physical and chemical properties. All right, let's look at the first one. We'll go through an example of each of these functional groups. So the first one is uh, halides. All right, and uh, in the example, they have replaced a hydrogen with a uh, they replaced a hydrogen with a, hal a halogen. And a ha what's a halogen? Well, a halogen is a... Let me get up our reference tables here. A halogen is anything that's in group 17. All right, so if you take a, a group 17 element, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, uh, those four, then and put it where a and put it where a hydrogen used to be, then it's called a halide. So let's draw an example of a halide. Let's get my writing up here. Oh, I can't write in white. That doesn't make much sense. Okay, cool. So let's start with uh, the simple compound. And what do we call this? We call that methane, right? Now if we replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a halide, because the halides can, uh, they have one bond to something else, um, then it would be, let's say, fluorine. So now we've got a fluorine on a methane, and this is just called fluoro methane. Now you could replace another hydrogen with a fluorine as well, and that would be called difluoromethane, because there's two of them. You could have, you could replace all four of them if you want to. Now you have no hydrogen on the methyl group, so this is called, this is called tetra, tetrafluoromethane. All right, that's basically it. You could uh, if we were to do an example, let's do an example, another one more example. All right, what do you think that one's ca called here? So this is called one iodo propane. It's on a propane backbone, and it has a one, goes on the one carbon. Yes, indeed. All right, let's do the next functional group. So al alcohols. An alcohol group is an OH group, and that attaches to a, a carbon backbone again. So we can have, let's do this. OH off it instead of the H, and I'm just going to put dashes there because it takes a long time to draw the hydrogen. So this, oh, this is the example that they actually have on there. This is called 1-propanol. Now, notice the end ends in an all. Now we're not doing like a propane or a, a methane or something like that. It's an, it's an all. So uh, we could also have the the functional group, the OH group, and you can put a dash between the O and the H, but it's not necessary. It, it, it is there for the bond is there. but um, So this one is called 
to prop and all. And this is actually has another name which is called isopropyl uh, that's not right there. Propyl alcohol. And this is the type of alcohol that is rubbing alcohol. All right. The drinking alcohol is ethanol. So if I were to draw ethanol, that would be this because it's got the eth, it's off an ethyl group, I mean ethyl backbone, right? So, and then we put the little functional group off of it. That's the alcohols. All right, here's ethers. Ethers is an interesting group, or a uh, functional group. The functional group is uh, in between two carbon chains. These R, this R's represent carbon chains, and they can be the same or they can be different. So if you look at the example, they have methyl, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> wow, methyl ethyl ether. So if I were to draw that out, you would see it like this. Actually, it doesn't matter which side I draw the ethyl on and the methyl on. So, if I highlight this, you can see that this side is an is a methyl group. So this is the methyl, All right? And then the other side over here that is like an ethyl, right? Because we have the um, the eth is this green right there, and then the meth is this one right here, right? So that's why we call it methyl ethyl ether. We know it's an ether because it's got an oxygen stuck between two carbon chains. Um, what if we had, if we had two methyl groups, we call this, we don't call it methyl methyl ether. Why did I draw a link off the top of this oxygen? That's stupid. We call this dimethyl ether. All right. It's all about recognizing patterns. All right, I'm going to give you another one, and I want you to name it. So, man, these take a lot to write them out. All right, just assume that there's hydrogen there. So what is the name of that one? So we would call that compound propyl ethyl ether because we've got a propyl group and an ethyl group hanging off each side of an oxygen. And that's what an ethyl or an ether looks like. Aldehydes. So an aldehyde has this crazy group hanging off the end. So it's going to be hanging off the end of a carbon chain. All right, so... If uh, they show propanal, so it's not propanol, it's propanal. And um, if we were to draw this, like this, oxygen always has two bonds, that's why it has a double bond off there. Hydrogen has one and carbon has four. So we've got hydrogens off of this as well. What's the name of this one? Well, we've got, an, we've got two carbon in a row, so it's eth, and it's eth. Enal, ethanol. Okay. All right, I'm going to draw one and you got to tell me what it is. All right, tell me what that is. So this has four carbons in a row, so it's going to be the bute enal. Bute enal for an aldehyde. Aldehydes. I don't know, I'm trying to think of a compound, something else. Never mind. Okay, um, the ketones. Ketones are, are um, carbon backbones that have uh, an oxygen sticking off of it in the middle of the compound. They are very similar to, um, to the aldehydes. So the aldehyde has an oxygen off the side like this on the end, but if you take that... If you take that oxygen and you move it to the middle, now it becomes a ketone. Kind of weird, isn't it? So 
So this is now a ketone. And this ketone right here is called, um, well, it has five. So it's going to be two, um, well, that's the exact, why do I keep doing the examples? I don't mean to do that, that's so weird. To two pentanone, um, we could do, let's do three pentanone by moving that oxygen over. Okay, now that, that's three pentanone. Name that properly, three pentanone. Okay. Excelente. Uh, the, the smallest one that we can do is with a three carbon chain. So what would we call this ketone? Tell me what we would call that. Okay, so we have three carbon in a row, so it's going to be a prop, and because it's a ketone, we end in a known, so it's prop unknown. Propanone, and that's the smallest ketone possible. Because the oxygen has to be in the on the on one of the center carbons on a chain. Organic acids, these are. Pretty cool. So this is kind of like a combination of an alcohol and an aldehyde because we are combining, we're putting an O on the end, but we're also putting an OH on the end of a carbon chain. <clears throat> so the example they gave is propanoic acid. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do the simplest organic acid, which would be this one. And this is called, because it has one carbon in it, we're going to start with meth. And we're going to end it like a, an acid would end. So looking at the example, it ends in anoic acid. So it's methanoic acid. That's it. So let's see uh, another example. So if I did this, what is the name of that acid? It has two carbons in it, and so it's going to be an eth. And then we're going to do ethanoic acid. All right, so now we did some acid. Oh, my God, that's not a bad. We're going to go to <laughs> ester now. So esters, these are a lot trickier than, the, than what we've done so far because the ester group <coughs> is in the middle of two carbon chains. And it's very important which one goes first and to recognize it. So let's dissect this example that we have. They drew it. They have it. So we've got carbon, carbon, carbon. And then you've got an oxygen in there. And then an oxygen comes off the top here too. Esters are my favorite compound, actually. They're really fun. All right. So let's see this example. It says it's methylpropanoate. So we've got to figure out where the heck this, where's the methyl group in here? Well, methyl groups have one carbon in them. So here it is right there. The methyl group is right there, attached to just the single oxygen. It doesn't have two oxygens attached to it. And then uh, we want to look at and see what the, um, where the propyl group is. And that's over here. We've got three in a row. Prop, it has three in a row. So that's our propyl group. So when they named it and they drew it out, they actually switched its side. So it's like methyl prop and O8. They didn't have to draw it like that. They could have, they could have uh, drawn the compound so that it was like this. That's still methyl prop and O8 with the hydrogens on it, of course. That's methylpropanoate as well. I just rotated the molecule around. So um, I'm not sure why they did that, did it this way on the reference tables where the, the, uh, the R groups, those carbon groups are on other sides like that. It's kind of weird to me. All right, I'm gonna actually move this over here. I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna draw out an ester for you to name because that's cool. Okay, so what is the name of this one? I'm going to 
be a little tricky and oops I can't do that and I'm going to rotate it compared to the example that they have um, yeah we'll just do that we'll make it simple like that so looking at the example try to figure out how to name this one okay so we're going to look at this we're going to see that there's a group right here that's an alpha group and we also have a uh, methyl over here. Now, which one goes first? Well, we know that the first one will be the one that is attached to just the oxygen atom because that's what we did over here. So that's going to be eth ethyl. And the other one is methyl. So it's an, And we're going to end it with an OH. So it's going to be methyl, I mean ethyl, meth, and OH. Alpha methanoate. And that's our esters. They are really awesome compounds. They smell really good. You can get different uh, flavors from them as well. So like banana flavor, artificial banana flavor and stuff like that is a is an ester. We're gonna I'm gonna next week we're actually gonna make an ester. It's gonna be spearmint. Well, I'm gonna make it. We'll see. Yeah. Amines and amides. So the are listed down here. Um, I don't know why they show this with three R's off of it. I've never seen that. I've only seen it come off the end, the, the, N, uh, the N and the H's. There's three, if you, as you see, their ends can attach to three different things. So they have one propen, propa, propenamine. So if I were to do just this, um, that would be meth, methanamine. These are not very commonly seen in the regions. So I don't really, wait, did I just even show that in my screen? What the heck? Crap. Oh, amides. Amides have this complicated functional group as well. Again, I've only seen them off the end. So they have propen propenamide amide. So I'm gonna do let's do ethanamide, which would be this. Again, this is these last two are not very common. So that's that's eth. Ethanamide. Yay. That's it for functional groups. And I'll see you.